part of our sermon series, and uh, if you've been with us, man, over the last uh, three to four weeks, over the last three to four weeks, uh, we've been going over this message series called, uh, This is What We Do. This is what we do. Oh, that's what I'm hearing. It's the draining. I was wondering what was going on. I thought it was my mic. I'm pulling it away. Um, but we've been going over this series called This Is What We Do, right? And uh, and we're on week three of that now. We're really just taking a few minutes this morning to just wrap up our conversation on generosity and giving, right? And that's something we've been talking about. And uh, man, the blessing that comes from being generous with what God's placed into our hands, right? And so that's been a, a constant theme for us over the last few weeks. And um, last week, if you were with us, you'll remember I brought a $5 bill up here, right? Remember that? And uh, I told you last week, I challenged you all, and I said, hey, if you don't give yet, if this is just kind of the beginning for you and you're not really somebody that, that gives faithfully, man, I, I challenge you to say, man, what if I gave $5 a week, right? What if I just started at $5? What if I wrote a paper check or gave them PayPal and put it in the back each week and just started giving $5 a week, 20 bucks a month, right? What does that look like? It seems so insignificant, doesn't it? It seems incredibly insignificant. It seems like it doesn't do a whole, this is going to drive me nuts, I'm turning this up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I just, I can't hear, I need to get that off, so Jonathan, sorry, wherever he is. Um, uh, so I challenged you last week, I said, what if we just started giving $5? What does that look like? What could God do if everybody in this room get, started giving $5? Like, what, what would that look like? Like, we're talking five bucks, right? And in America, $5 is just not a lot of money, right? Some parts of the world it is, but here, what's it going to get you? Bag of chips and a Coke, Right? McDouble and, a, and maybe a small fry, right? I mean, what's, it, what's $5 going to get you? Not a whole lot. And so, man, when we look at $5 and we think about giving it, it just seems so insignificant, right? It seems so useless. It seems just, I am really struggling with this point of this. Uh, it seems so insignificant, like it just doesn't have impact, right? Yeah, I'm going to work on this. Just bear with us, right? <laughs> How's that? Are you doing better now? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's keep going. This is rough. <laughs> um, we also ask if you already give, if you would add $5 to your total every week. If you would add that, we challenge you to do that. And one thing we talked about is how uh, we believe that Jesus wanted us to know, man, when we're unified as a body, when we're unified together in our giving, even in insignificant amounts like a dollar or $5 or $10 or whatever your amount may be that feels insignificant, Suddenly, when we collectively do that together, all of a sudden our tiny, little, teeny, insignificant portions that we're pitching in all of a sudden becomes this collectively, extremely extravagant portion, right? Yeah. It becomes God's provision. It becomes what God does when His body is unified and all given to the same place, right? Yeah. And so I'm going to tell you, man, it's pretty shocking what God can do when we give just a little. Right? When we all give just a little, our portion, what God's called us to. And so, man, I, I, it's just, it's such a big deal. But um, before I continue sharing on that, man, I want to tell you a story. Um, I heard a story this week that I want to share with you guys, just kind of a testimony about the whole blessing of generosity. And uh, there was this lady, her name was uh, Donna, mid-50s, brown hair, brown eyes. Doesn't matter for the story, but for your imagination. Um, <laughs> she said, man, years ago... I heard this message on the power of God to multiply what you give, right? And I heard this message, and it just it moved me. And the church, they were, they were taking an offering, and I was in this specific church, and, and, I'm, and I'm hearing this, and, and I was just so moved by what was happening that I was, I was telling God, i just, I got to give towards this. I want to give towards this. And, and, and so she kind of opened up her bank account, and she's looking, and she's trying to see how much is left, how much is there. And she realized her and her husband had only $5.35 to their name. Her checking account, $5.35 savings, empty, right? That's it. That's all they had, and she said, man, maybe I'll just, I'll give five bucks, right? And then she thought, man, no, that's really pushing it, right? That's really a bad idea. I can't strap us to 35 cents, right? So she said, what if I give a dollar? What if I give a dollar, just a dollar? It seems so useless, right? It seems so insignificant, but she thought, man, what if I just give a dollar? And she pulls out her checkbook, and from her, her, personal, check, uh, her personal checkbook, her personal bank account, she writes a check for one dollar personal check for one dollar, she puts it in the offering, offering and she's, she's like, man, I'm, it's humiliating, right? This is embarrassing. I hate this, right? She was not happy. It felt so insignificant, right? It was so useless. But she gave that check for a dollar. She gave it to this ministry, and she's telling this story. She's crying as she's telling it because she's embarrassed that she's writing this check for a dollar, and, uh, but she gave it. Right? But she gave it anyway. She gave what she had, and she said, God, please multiply this dollar bill. I don't have much more. This is what it is, 20% of what I own. 
right? God, multiply this dollar bill. I, I, I've got to give something. I can't not give anything. I've got to give something. So God, would you multiply it? And so she gave it. She gave her insignificant portion. She gave her dollar bill to bless somebody else and ask God to do that. And she said, and I know it's not about, it's not a, a lot, but it's what I have, right? It's not a whole lot. It's not that I'm giving a lot, but it's what I have. God, multiply it and, and use it for your glory. And so Donna and her husband, they went to their small group that night. And when they got to their small group, there was another couple there. And this couple came up to them, and they handed her uh, a, 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 an envelope, right? And, and so she goes to open up this envelope with her husband. And as she opens it, what do you know? There's a check, another personal check. And this time, she hadn't made this one out, right? And so they handed her this check, and she opens it up. And as she reads it, she starts to cry. Because somebody handed her $1,000 in this envelope. Somebody that wasn't expecting to give, somebody that wasn't anticipating doing that, and they said to her, they said, man, we don't know why we need to do this, but today we just, we've been praying about this for a while, we just felt like God dropped it in our spirit, that he told us that we just need to give this to you, that we, we just got this confirmation, we just feel like we just need to give this, we don't know why, we don't know what it's for, but God just told us to give this, and so this is for you, and she just sat there, and she weeped, because she knew God saw her, right, God's power moved, God did something, right, and so she gives this thousand dollar check, man, it, that's wild, right? That's extravagant giving. That's, that's generosity. That's true generosity, right? That's it. That's it. That's wild giving. But hear me out, right? I'm not going to say that always happens, right? I'm not going to tell you every single time you give, somebody's going to give, right, to you. I'm not going to tell you every time you give that somehow money's going to pop up all over the place. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. Do not hear me say that because that's not what I'm saying to you. But what I am saying to you is he's faithful, right? God multiplies what we give. He's faithful for what we give, right? He will multiply it, so we can trust Him, right? This is what we do. It's who we are, right? We are made in God's image. We are givers. We're generous because He's generous, right? We give because God gave first. For God so loved the world that He gave. For God so loved the world that He gave, right? We give because He gave first. We're generous because our God is generous. And so God gave. And so we, as the body of Christ, this is what we do. Right? This is who we are. This is what we do. We should lead the way with a rational generosity. That should be our story. That should be who we are. Right? It's what we do. It's who we are. We recognize that giving and being generous are actually two different things. We talked about this in week one, right? Yeah. Being giving and being generous are actually two different things because everyone gives, right? Everyone gives to something sometimes, right? Yeah. Right? During Christmas time, we dropped 50 cents in the Salvation Army bucket, feel like we did our part, right? Right? <laughs> I, got some, I got some change, right? I give. I'm a giver, right? <laughs> right? It's true. But, right? Giving and being generous are actually two different things. Giving and being generous are two different things because being generous comes from a, a heart posture, Right? There's a heart change. There's something that's taking place. It's irrational generosity. It comes out of you. You can't help but give. You want to give. You're looking for opportunities to give. Right? That's generosity. That's generosity. If you're taking notes, giving and being generous are two different things. And as Jesus followers, we want to go far beyond where most people live today. Right? We want to go far beyond where the average person is. And that's what we call a scarcity mindset. Right? A scarcity mindset. We've kind of talked about this over the last few weeks, right? Instead of a scarcity mindset, we should have an abundant heart filled with faith for our good God, right? We should be filled with abundance, right? Because God loves to give good gifts to his children. But uh, if you're with us the first week, let me show you something real quick. I want to show you these cycles again because scarcity is actually a cycle. If we could put that up there for just a moment. It's a mindset. It's a way of thinking, so here it is, right? Check this out. If you aren't paying attention, pay attention. Here we go. This is what's, what, what scarcity looks like in your mindset. You ready? This is, what, this is what happens. God provides, and as soon as he provides, as soon as we get his provision, what do we do? We consume it, right? We assume it's for us. God's given us a paycheck, a tax return, a gift, a whatever. We assume it's for us, and so what do we do? We consume it. We consume it, and so we spend everything we have. We leave next to nothing, right? And so now what happens? All the funds are dried up. So what happens? We lack, right? We're lacking. Now all of a sudden, I can't pay that bill. I can't get those groceries. I can't do that. I can't, right? We spend it all. We consume it. So now we lack. So what does that lead you to? Now you're scared. Now you're scared. What am I going to do? I can't make ends meet. 
I can't do what I need to do. I need this. I have to have this. I need. What are we going to do? God, where are you? Right? That's what we do. God, where are you? And we live paycheck to paycheck because we just live in this, this scarcity cycle. Right? And so what, what do we do? We prepare mentally. Right? After this happens, we consume it. So then we lack. So then we fear. And what happens? Right? All of a sudden, we, we begin mentally preparing for when the next paycheck comes in. When the next gift comes in, when the next tax return, the next, right? We begin mentally preparing for how we're going to spend the money that's not even in our hands yet. Yeah. Right? It's a scarcity cycle. It's a scarcity cycle. It just goes in circles, right? God supplies another paycheck, or whatever. We consume it. We assume it's all for us. Get the things we want, the things we need, the basics. Then it's gone. We lack the things we need. So we fear. And our fear causes us to medicate the fear by spending some more. Yeah. Right? We medicate the fear by spending some more. And so it feels good for the moment, right? It feels good in the moment, but it's a scarcity cycle. It's the scarcity cycle. It's living paycheck to paycheck, and the cycle just continues and continues. I wish we could give more, but we can't. I wish I could be a part of that, but I can't. I wish I could. I wish I could. I wish I could, right? Yeah. But listen to me. As Jesus followers, we do not serve a scarcity God. We serve an abundant God. We do not serve a God of scarcity, right? That's not who he is. He is abundant. Surprise, surprise. Abundance is also a cycle. Can you put that up there for us? When God gives to us, when God supplies, what do we do? What should be our first response as Christians, as people who follow Christ? We give. That's our first response. We give first. What is the first thing you do? You give from the first fruits, right? You give first. We give and we give first. We return 10%. We return the tithe back to God. It was already his. He gave you the other 90%. We return the 10% back to God of what he's already given to us, right? It's an act of worship. It's a sign of surrender. It's a, it's a position under authority. It's, it's like saying, God, you're in control, right? I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my life. Just the same way I trust you with my spouse and my children and where I go to church and where I go to work and the things that I... God, I trust you here too. And here I am putting you first in this too, Right? It's an act of worship. So because of God's goodness, we tithe, right? We give back 10%. We start at 10%. We give back. And we believe as Jesus followers that when we do that, according to Malachi 3, that God opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out so much blessing, right? The floodgates of heaven we talked about last week, like the flood in Genesis, and nothing is left untouched. Nothing in your life can be left untouched. I'm not talking about health, wealth, and happiness. I'm talking about the good things. Peace, love, joy, patience, right? Like good everything. Nothing in your life can be untouched. Just like the flood. That's how God chose to describe giving to us. That's, how he, that's the imagery he chose to use. The flood in Genesis. And nothing is left untouched. Nothing. Nothing. We believe as Jesus followers that he opens up the windows of heaven. So God supplies. And what do we do? We give. The first thing we do is give. God, I got my tax return, 10% 10, 10 of it's yours. God, I got my, my paycheck, 10% of it's yours, right? It's the first thing I do. First thing that goes out. God, we give, right? And then what happens? What happens after that? God multiplies it, right? We give, and we give unified as one body to one place. And what happens? God, God starts to multiply it, right? It starts to grow. You start to see these things change, these things being built up. And we're, we're trusting God for provision, and he multiplies it, and then... All of a sudden, sometimes, like Donna, he multiplies our faith in our own life, yeah. right? Sometimes in our own life, God will be like, look, I see you, right? I see you, I'm here, I'm providing, right? And so what happens in those moments? Well, your faith grows. Yeah. You see God show up and show off, and your faith, it grows. And then what happens, right? The cycle. The cycle starts again, because now you're hooked. Now you're hooked on giving. Now you understand what God does. You see the adrenaline rush. You feel it. You understand it. You know what he's doing. And all of a sudden, so God supplies again. And you want to give again, right? And then God multiply it again, right? And it just keeps going. It's this cycle and your faith is built, right? right? So tithing, giving, really what it does, it kicks off this cycle of abundance. It kicks off this cycle of abundance. And because we serve a God who's all good and he's all powerful, right? Entirely good. Entirely abundant. He loves to give good gifts to his children, right? We're not talking about prosperity, right? But he's generous. That's who God is. Yeah. That's the God we serve, right? You believe it? Yes. Yes. I feel like I'm talking to some dead people today. Talk to him, man. <laughs> Gee, should I change the subject? <laughs> everybody gives. But not everybody's generous, right? Everybody gives. But not everybody's generous, right? 
So what I want to talk to you about today for the rest of our time here, the question I want to ask is how do we as Jesus followers grow into becoming abundant givers? Right from scratch. How do we grow into becoming abundant givers? How do we reflect the heart of an abundantly good God to bless the people around us and around the world? Yeah. So let's talk about three different ways that Jesus followers will faithfully give. You ready? Yeah. ready. All right, cool. Two of us are ready. That's great. Um, so number one, for the two of you. <laughs> yeah, okay, three of us now. All right, good. If any of you want to chime in, feel free. It's cool. But number one, here we go. Give spontaneously. As Christ followers, we are going to give spontaneously. There will be a time when we see a need in somebody else's life, and we're going to think, I can meet that need. I should meet that need. Right? I know that I can, and I will. God's given me more than I need in this area. I'm going to meet that person's need. Yeah. Right? That should be your story. This should be a part of what you do on a regular basis as a Christ follower. Right? God's given me more time than I need. Right? I may not have a lot of money, but man, i got a whole lot of time. Right? God's given me more time than I need. How can I use it to serve you? How can I help you? Right? Man, God's, or maybe it's resources. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's uh, an extra car, a third car that's sitting in your driveway, and there's a family who desperately needs one. Right? Maybe it's a bed. Maybe it's a rocking chair. And there's a girl who lives next door that doesn't have a rocking chair for a brand new baby. Man, I don't know. Right? But this is it. Right? This is it. Supplying. We're giving spontaneously. Yeah. Right? I, I, I may not have this, but I have this. I may not have this, but I got that. I can help you with that. Right? That's something I can do. I wasn't here thinking about it. I wasn't here planning for it. I didn't know this was going to pop up in my life. I didn't set up a separate savings account for it. I didn't do a... Right? But here it is. There's a need and I want to meet it. Right? I want to meet that need. Yeah. Right? That's what we do. That's who we are. Yeah. Right? That's who we are. You know, this actually happened last week. Someone in our church came up to my wife last week and she said, man, there's a need here and I want to meet it. Right? There's a person here and they don't have the money to go to women's retreat and man, uh, she's just going to end up skipping it. She's not going to make it. If somebody doesn't do something about this, man, she's just not going to go and she's not going to tell anyone. Right? She's not going to say anything. But man, I know she wants to be there. So I want to be a blessing. I want to give spontaneously to this need. I, I, don't, I don't have a whole lot myself, but I'm going to make sure that she is able to be there. Right? Man, that's it. That's giving spontaneously. That's meeting a need as it arises. Right? Right? She didn't come playing for that that day, but hey, she left and she met a need. Right? It's amazing. You can definitely clap for that. Right? Thank you. That's spontaneous giving. That's it. That's kicking off this cycle of abundance. It's kicking it off. It's beginning it. It's starting it. This is where we start. This is it. It's amazing, right? you got to love generosity. You have to. And the truth is, when, the, when people decide to give, oftentimes, this is the most common form, right? When people decide to give, giving spontaneously is the most common form you'll ever find anywhere in the entire world, including every single church you've ever stepped foot into, right? It's the most common form. The vast majority of us give spontaneously. For example, when the earth, uh, earthquake struck Haiti, I bet there is a significant number of people in here that gave, right? I bet there's at least a handful that gave, right? From, from your living rooms in Auburn, Maine, you looked at the TV and you said, I know I can't get there, but what can I do to help? And you did. You helped. You gave spontaneously. You picked up the phone. You did whatever you had to do. When Hurricane Katrina came, some of you got on a bus and you went down there and you helped out. Some of you gave your money to go help out. You gave spontaneously to meet a need. That's what we do. It's who we are. We are Christ followers. This is what we do. We serve a generous God. So we are generous people. You just give, right? You give. You weren't thinking about it. You weren't planning for it. You didn't know it was coming. You didn't have a savings account set up for it. An emergency fund over here in the back. But it came and here we are, right? You gave, right? Amen. So what's up? So you did it. You gave spontaneously to help meet that need. You might be driving down the road. You see somebody in need, right? There's a single parent maybe at your job. And they can't pay the bills this month. They're going to lose their home. The, 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 the lights aren't going to be on. And you get together with people in your office. You say, hey, what if we could meet that need, right? What if we all pitched in 50 bucks and we helped them pay that? What if we all did it together? Like, that's spontaneous giving. Meeting the need immediately, right? Trying to meet that need. Yeah. This is the way uh, the Good Samaritan actually gave in the story that Jesus told. If you don't know this story, there's a Jewish man. And uh, he was out on this roadway. And he was jumped Somebody, somebody jumped on him, a couple of thieves, robbers, they, they jumped on him, they beat the heck out of him, they left him for dead, they took all his things and they took off. Man was just laying there, going to die on the side of the road, bleeding out. Jewish man. 
And uh, after, after, after he'd been laying there for a while, a couple of religious men had kind of walked on by. Didn't do anything about it. There's reasons behind it. I'm not going to get into it. But they didn't do anything about it. They just walked on by him. Just kept going, kept going. Just, just kept it moving. Said, I wish I could help. Right? I wish I could. But the Samaritan, who would normally never talk to a Jew, they had beef. Samaritans and Jews were not cool with each other. <laughs> they had big problems. They would never talk to each other. But the Samaritan who would normally never speak to a Jewish man. He goes out and he sees this man bleeding on the side of the road, and he spontaneously helps that man who he should have left there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Culture, social situations say he should have left that man there. Right? The gospel says otherwise. But socially, he should have left him there. Right? And what does he do? He goes over and he, he, he doesn't, the guy doesn't even ask for help. The, the Jewish man never says anything to the Samaritan man. And so the Samaritan man just goes over and starts caring for him. Right, just walks up without even being asked, and uh, man, he just he walked on over and helped. And he didn't wake up that day and say, "Man, I'm going to do something great today." Right? The Samaritan did not wake up that morning and go, "Man, today's going to be an extraordinary day. I can't wait to save the world." Right? They're going to write about me. They're going to put me in this Bible. They're going to right. That wasn't the situation. Yeah. Right? The Samaritan was just going about his day. It was as normal as any other day. It was no different than, than yesterday. It's not going to be different than tomorrow. Right? It's just just a normal day. Just normal, right? right? Everyday responsibilities, but God, you know what, man, this day's yours. What do you want to do with it, right? Same thing we say. As I go about my routine activities of my day, as I go to work to pay uh, the bills for my family, put food on the table, God, I know that I have these responsibilities, but God, this day is yours. Yeah. How would you want me to use it, yeah. right? I've got to make these calls, i got to do these things. I have all these responsibilities, but God, feel free to interrupt me. What do you have for me, yeah. Right? Somebody need prayer? Is there a need I, need I can meet? Is there, what is it? What do you have for me, God? That's all he did. That's all the Samaritan man did. That's it. God, I'm available to you. Do you need me somewhere? I'm available. That's it. He wasn't planning for the extraordinary. He wasn't planning to meet some great need. He just said, God, I'm available. Yeah. I'm here. I'm available to you. And so as I go about my routine activities, God, lead me, right? God, I'm your servant. He took this guy to a hotel room. And he pays the bill, right? This is what Jesus said to him in Luke chapter 10, verse 35. It says, The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Look after this man. He said, When I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. What this guy do? Well, we know he definitely didn't wake up that morning saying, Man, I'm going to do something great today. Right? We know that for sure. But he was available. Right? He was available, on call, and spontaneously, when he saw a need, he met that need, right. right? Spontaneously, he met that need, and that could be your story too, right? There's nothing special about this Samaritan man, right? God is no respecter of persons, the Bible says, right? Like, this is not something special about, this can be your story, right? God can interrupt your day. He can do something significant through you, yeah. if you're available, right? right. If you're available. Yeah. So, man, I want to encourage you. This is who we are. Yeah. This is what we do, right? This is who we are as Jesus followers. We are spontaneous givers. We're spontaneous givers. We give to meet a need. We give because God gave first. Mm. Amen. 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 It's who we are. It's what we do. But don't get confused. Spontaneously giving is not the stopping mark, right? Mm. It's, not, it's not where giving stops, right? It's where it begins. It's where it starts. But it's, not, it's certainly not where it stops, this is where most people stop, but if you give only spontaneously, i got to tell you, man, you're going to be extremely limited in how you impact this world. You're going to be extremely limited in, in how you impact the people around you, right? If you're extremely limited in how you give, then it's going to be extremely limited in what kind of impact you make. Yeah. So as Jesus followers, we not only give spontaneously, but number two, we also give strategically. We give strategically. As Jesus followers, we give prayerfully and strategically. Some of you hear uh, these stories and, and you think, man, I wish I could give more. You hear these stories and you think, man, I, I wish I could do more. I want to do more. But listen, the truth is you can give more. We can all give more, right? But you have to strategically plan to give more, yeah. right? It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. Right? Uh, and most of us, we say, God, when I have the bank account, when I have the salary, when I have the promotion, when I have the raise, God, I'm going to give. Right? This is what I have, when I have, when I have. Right? 
hey, it's like a dance, right? <laughs> Let's talk, right? Man, when I have it, I'm going to give it. But God, I don't have it. Well, it's because you haven't strategically planned. It's there. It's there. Yeah. But you got to plan for it. The truth is you can give more if you plan on giving more. If giving becomes a part of your heart, if giving becomes a part of your values, it becomes a part of your strategy, if it becomes about who you are, about the kind of person you are. We as Christians, we are strategic givers, right? We give 10% of what comes into our hands. We strategically, prayerfully, and out of a heart of worship, we return 10%, a tithe, back to God. Amen? No? All right. Okay. We'll keep going. We'll Maybe next week. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never talk about this again, guys, okay? I'm lying. <laughs> but we don't give last, right? Let's start here. 10% we give first, right? The first fruits, the first thing that comes in, the first, right? We give from the first. We don't give from the last. We give it first. Christ followers plan. We make a plan, right? We plan to give first. We plan to put God first in every single area of our lives, period. Yeah. Every area, all of them, right? And the tithe giving is just one of the many areas that we say, God, you're first. You're first, right? Just like everything else in my life, God, you're first, right? You're first here, too. We put you first, even in this. And so as followers of Jesus, man, giving is not something we do when we want to. It's not something that we do when our emotions are like, give, give, you need to do this. Or when the pastor's up here, like, barking at you, and right? Like, <laughs> we don't do it under compulsion because of, you know, somebody's pushing us and moving us and doing. No, right? We give strategically because it's who we are. It's who our God is. It's who we are, right? As a follower of Jesus, giving is not something we do when we want to or when we're prompted to by an emotion or a feeling, but as Jesus followers, we give strategically as a prayerful response to the, gen the, to the, generous, to, to the generosity God's already poured out on us, Amen. right? Amen. 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 Yeah. And we give first. Above all else in our lives as an act of worship, man, we give first. Yeah. We need a little interaction. Help me out. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Let's do it together. Here we go. Generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. Whoa. Generous people, right? Not the average people, but generous people, right? Generous people, they plan to be generous, right? There's a plan that's formed to be generous. There's more taking place in the background than just showing up and feeling compulsed to give and saying, I wish I could, right? It's so much different, right? Generous people plan to do what's generous. And they don't stop with that plan, right? They stand firm in it. There is no, um, I can't afford it this month, <laughs> right? There is no, God, I'm not sure I still feel the same goosebumps I used to feel when I first started going to church, so I'm going to drop a percent, right? It's, it, right? Like, we, we so naturally give towards emotion and feeling. But as Christ followers, that's not what we do. That's not who we are, right? We give strategically. We are strategic givers, and we are generous people, so we plan to do what's generous, and we stand firm in the generosity, right? They plan it out. Most of us, what do we do when money comes in? Let's be honest, right? Well, what do we, let, me, let me rephrase that. Most of us, what do we plan when money comes in? All right, we plan to spend it. <laughs> we plan to spend it. We plan to consume it, right? We see something we like on Amazon, on, on some website, in some store, and we... Uh, I got a plan for that check, right? I got a plan for the next one, baby. Here we go, right? I got, right? And we wait. We wait for it to come in. We start that cycle, right? right. We see something we like. We almost have that purse. Lord, you know I need that purse, right? <laughs> I look so good in church with that purse. <laughs> Man, in Jesus' name, I'm going to have that church, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness, right? When this such and such amount of money comes in, God, I'm going to have that purse. It's going to be mine, right? Guys, Lord, I need that fishing reel. God, I need that gun, right? Oh, God, I need that part. When I have that part, this thing's going to be complete. God, I need it, right? i got to have it. I'm waiting for it. I'm planning for it, right? We plan to spend. We plan to consume. Yeah. That's what we do. We hear money's coming, paycheck's coming. Let's plan to consume it, yeah. right? Let's, okay. let's consume it. That's not what we do, right? That's not what we do. What do we do? What do we do? We plan to cons what we often do is we plan to consume what God's provided. But as Jesus followers, we're not spiritual consumers. If you checked out on me, I need you to hear this part. <laughs> we, we constantly plan to do things with the money that God's providing. But we as Jesus followers, we are not spiritual consumers. 
We're not spiritual consumers. What are we then? We are spiritual contributors. Right? Yeah. We are spiritual contributors. We do not believe that the church exists for us and our pleasure and our happiness and everything we've ever wanted. And I'm going to leave if you don't provide the right service to me because I go to your church. Right? That's not who we are. Right? We are the church. Right? And we together collectively make the church and build the church and do it together. Right? We're not consumers. We're not spiritual consumers. We're spiritual contributors, right? A lot of people, you want to go to church, you want to sit down and just watch and let everybody else do all the work. And do, right? We're contributors, man. That's not what Jesus calls us to, right? That's not it, man. Like, if that's what you're settling for, can I tell you you're settling? Can I tell you you're missing out on an amazing piece of what God has for you, but you don't know because you've been settling for so long? Right? Man, get involved. Do something more. You're not spiritual. You're not spiritual consumers. You're spiritual contributors, right? We are the church. We don't exist to make everybody who comes here happy. We exist to save the world, right? That's it. That's our mission. It's who we are. It's not just about us all the time, right? Instead of planning to make a purchase, what if we as Jesus followers plan to make an impact, right? What if instead of planning to make a purchase, we as Jesus followers plan to make an impact? Man, what would this world look like? What would this city look like? There was this guy. Another story. And he said, man, I felt like, <clears throat> I felt like years ago, excuse me, <laughs> I felt like years ago God challenged me. I've been, I've, been, I've been giving my whole life, I give 10% on a regular basis, but I feel like years ago God challenged me to add a percentage every single year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? He said, I felt like God challenged me to add a percentage Every single year. And so, man, when he got paid every two weeks, it just automatic withdrawal. He was just a wise man, right? He'd just come right out and go there and get it done. And he, he started this process, right? And one year he got to 11%, the following year, and the following year is 12% and 13%. And it was just growing and growing. And now today, he doesn't go to church here, but now today, this man gives 33% of his income every single year to the kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing? Like 33% of everything. And God has continued to bless him every step of the way because as he increases that giving, God's like, oh, word, right? I'll increase it too, right? He just keeps putting more in his hands and the guy just keeps giving more and more back, right? Right? We can trust with a little, he can trust with a lot, right? And so he just keeps giving and giving and giving and God just keeps feeding it, right? He's got that abundance cycle flying, right? It's just screaming around the circle, screaming around the track, right? But let me tell you something. It doesn't happen by accident, right? That wasn't a mistake, he didn't accidentally wake up one morning and go, man, I gave 33%, right? No, that was a slow progression over years, right? Slowly, every single day, more and more, all the time, every year, more and more, right? He planned for it. He sat down with his wife. He planned for it. He sat down with his children. Listen, this is the sacrifices we're going to make to make this happen, and God's going to supply, right? Preach faith into him, and did. God's done amazing things, right? And over and over, but it's not an accident. It's strategic. As Christians, we are strategic givers. We're strategic we have to be strategic about it. But again, it's not an accident, right? We've got to plan our lives around taking part in the blessing that God has for us of giving. Generosity. Generous people plan to do what is generous. They plan for it. Generous people plan to do what is generous. That's what Jesus' followers do. We plan to do what is generous. And then we stand firm in our generosity. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as Jesus' followers, we give spontaneously which is amazing, but we don't stop there, right? Yeah. We also give strategically. We plan for it. We give first, the first fruits. Yeah. And the third area, if you're taking notes, is this. Number three, we're going to close with this. We give sacrificially. Mm -hmm. As Christ followers, we give sacrificially. We are sacrificial givers. If it doesn't hurt once in a while when you give, you're probably doing it wrong, right? Yeah. It's true. Right? It hurts sometimes, man. We give spontaneously, we give strategically, and we give sacrificially. There are so many powerful examples of this uh, in Scripture. But I love the one in Mark chapter 12. This is how Mark told the story in his gospel. He said, uh, in a moment actually, he said, uh, Jesus sat down, listen to this, right? A little, a little different. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put, and he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Weird, right? Jesus sat down. <laughs> Jesus sat down right here. Well, everybody was giving. Right here. Right? 
And it says that he watched as they put everything in the temple tre treasury. It's almost like creepy, right? Like, why would Jesus do that? Right? Like, you, you got to kind of wonder, like, what, what is Jesus doing? What's he thinking? Why is this happening? Jesus is just kind of sitting there, just kind of watching. Eh. Here's the thing. I think Jesus understood something a lot of us don't understand. See, Jesus knew what they were doing, what they were giving. It was a direct reflection of what was taking place in their heart. Right? It was a direct reflection of what was taking place right here. Right? And so, even when the external shows one thing, God can always look back here. Right? The external may show this, and everything looks okay, and everything is, we're doing our thing, but like, Jesus is like, listen man, I know. I know. Right? There's more. There's more. Jesus understood that. Check this out. So Mark says that Jesus, he's watching what people put in the offering bucket. And it says, many rich people, they came and they threw in large amounts. I mean, we had millionaires coming through and just, just giving in this money and giving and giving and giving. And it's filling right up, right? But this, they're throwing in all these large amounts. And this poor widow, this poor widow comes up, right? And all she's got is two copper coins. Two pennies, basically. It's worth two cents. That's it. A couple pennies. Check this out. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. It says, calling his disciples together, Jesus said, this is powerful. Check this out. He said, truly I tell you, this poor widow, this woman who could have been living off the scraps of these rich people, right? This poor woman, this poor widow has put in more into the treasury than all the others, all the rich men. She put in way more than them. Because she gave, because these men, they gave out of their wealth. But the widow, she gave out of her poverty. She put in everything, all that she had to live on, everything. And Jesus is like, she gave more than all of you. I don't care if it was two cents, it was the only two cents she had. You have millions and you gave a thousand or what, 500,000, right? Like, that's great, but she gave everything. She gave it all. She gave it all. What's really interesting to me, uh, and this is where Jesus and I differ, I messed this up this week, but man, what's interesting to me is that Jesus doesn't stop her. Jesus never stopped her. We had a couple in this church, we had a, a family that gave this week, and I literally contacted them and said, listen, I know we're working on a few different things, are you sure you want to give this, right? Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure this is the time? Are you sure? Right? And they're like, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Right? I was the one going, are you sure? Are you sure? I was the guy. I kind of was this, right? And I'm like... But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that at all. And said he watched. And what does he do? What's really interesting to me is that instead, instead of stopping her, what does Jesus do? Guys, come here. Guys, come here. Look at this. Are you guys seeing this? Are you seeing this? this see, all these millionaires, they came through and they gave and they gave and they gave. and they, Like there was all this money and we, were, we knew we were good. We were going to pay the bills. And we got the food. We got the things we need. We got... Jesus doesn't care about any of that. He cares about your heart posture. He cares about what you're giving from. There's a reason. There's a reason why you give, and there's a reason why you don't give. Right? There's a reason. And God cares about your heart posture. That's the number one thing He wants. He's not here for your money. He's not here for your family. He's not here to, to take over and make you do all these things. God's here for your heart. He just wants your heart. It's just another sign that He has it. Are you surrendered? Are you surrendered? Man, I'm not here trying to get your checks. This isn't going in my pocket. Right? And if you don't go to church here, please don't give here. If you want to give a gift, that's fine. But this is not the place to give your tithes. Take it back to your church. We're not here for your money. God's here for your heart. Amen. He wants your heart. Amen. Jesus said, come here. He gathered the disciples. Jesus walked through and he gathered the disciples. Guys, come here. Look at what this widow did. Look at what she did. He didn't say, no, don't give it. He said, look at what she did. He celebrated her. He lifted her up. He said, she's given more than all of you. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I'm going to bless you. Right? You're good. I'm going to give you what you need. Go ahead and give that over. Right? Give your thing. God's got you. He's got you, man. He's got you. This is who we are. It's what we do. We're made in His image. We give because God gave first. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. Why? Why? That you won't perish, but have everlasting life with Him. Amen. We give because God gave first. He gave you eternity and we struggle to give 10%. God forgive us. Wow. 
We give spontaneously. We give strategically. And we give sacrificially. It's who we are. It's what we do. It's the image we were made in. Right? It's our Father. It's our Creator. He's generous. He's generous. And man, this is what happens when $5 is given over. When you step up to the challenge and we're unified in giving. And you all start giving your $5 a week. And we're doing that sort of thing. Last week, we challenged you to do that. We saw the third highest offering we have ever seen in the history of this church. Because the body was unified and they gave from lack. We are. It's who we are. Imagine what the church of Jesus Christ could do if we not only gave five dollars a week, but we submitted our finances to God. And we said, God, 10%. Every single week is going to be my starting point. Every week, God, I'm going to be faithful. Because I don't give by emotion. I don't give when somebody pressures me. I don't give when I have that feeling for a couple months and then I just let it fall off. But God, I'm going to be strategic. And I'm going to serve. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to let you have it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to waver. Right? God, this is yours. It's yours. You, I get to keep this 90% that you've given to me. I got that job, you gave it to me. That stuff, you gave it to me. Right? I'm born in America because you made me be born in America. Right? In this state, in this town, to those parents. That, right? It's all set up. We serve an abundantly good God. Amen. We serve an abundantly good God. Good God, man, what if we plan to give sacrificially together? What if together we were unified in our giving? We all contributed. We all did our part. Man, what would God do with this city? What would God do with this church? <coughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you are a generous God. God, that you are not uh, stingy with us. God, that you don't look at us and say, oh, you can have this, or you might be able to, oh, maybe that, right? But God, instead, like, you look at us and you say, I want to give you everything. I love you. I want to give you the world. I want to give you everything you've ever wanted, everything you've ever needed. God, you love us. You care. The same way we care for our kids and more. God, I pray that we would trust you. I pray that we would step out like Malachi 3 said, where you said, test me in this. Test me. The only time in the entire Bible where you said, test me. Test me in this. God, I pray that you would give us the faith and the boldness and the conviction to step out and trust you. We'll be sure to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. And God, we're going to watch you do amazing things every step of the way. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for everything you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Love you guys.